and uh, welcome to the lecture 5 of the learning about learning uh, lecture series and in this lecture we are going to develop a model for an associative learning as I was uh, al alluding to it towards the end of the fourth lecture. So, the idea here is that we are going to develop a model, the model will uh, explain some of the observations that we have seen so far in through experiments uh, where that, that I have described. So, what do we have in terms of the model? In terms of the model what we have is number 1 from Raskorla's experiment, in from Raskorla's experiment we know that there is a notion of contingency right, the idea of contingency. The, um, here what we are trying to say is that it is only the stimuli right, we are all the, all the while we are trying to study about how two different stimuli are getting um, related to I mean how the animal learns to establish a relation between two different stimuli and in response to that how it modifies its behavior right, that is all we are trying to learn here. And from Raskola's experiment what we get out from Raskola's experiment is this notion of contingency all right, um, we talked about positive. 0 and negative contingency. Any model that we try to develop should be able to account this, should be able to explain this experiment and its result very naively and na naturally. Number, number 2, we talked about Garcia and Kohling's experiment all right. Um, what is that? That experiment tells you not any two stimuli right, it is not just uh, any two arbitrary stimuli that I can take and then try to make an association or in other words the nature of the stimuli matters and it is this nature that determines a given US combination to be more susceptible for forming an associative connection or less associative strength for this connection. So, this is an example where we have trained uh, where we had, uh, saw Garcia had trained the rats in uh, flavored and bright noisy water and then uh, the rats tend to associate more with the flavored water when there is a stomach malleus as opposed to uh, bright noisy water right. That is being observed in this experiment right. So, you given US US uh, CS combination defines the strength of association ok, that needs to come out naturally too in this model. Third is this wonderful experiment by Kamen where he said pre learning a given CS can actually inhibit learning in a different setting when you are giving a compound stimuli. So, let us say if you have learned a CS 1 and then um, you are present put into another situation where you are presented both the CS1 and the US CS2 and asked to associate with the same US, then the CS1 can inhibit the formation or the learn formation of association or the learning of CS2 US um, association. In uh, more specifically in this example we talked about how tone and light when presented together along with the shock can acquire associations of the tone shock, light shock very beautifully. However, if you were to take the animal and then train them, pre-train them with tone shock or light shock for that matter, then you present them with the tone and shock together with the I mean tone and light together with the shock, then light and shock does not form an association. This is what I call it as pre-learning of one CS can inhibit the learning of another CS US association when presented in a compound manner ok. So, there are many other uh, such experiments, but these are some of the salient uh, features that we are looking for in our model and our model should be able to nicely and continue smoothly explain all these observations ok, good. Now, what did um, what did the model say? Let us recap what it says, number 1 it says there is a maximum associative strength for a given US. So, let us call this associative strength as V or since it is maximum let us call it as V max 
okay. Now, what do we call it as an associative strength? Um, it is uh, what you are uh, in, uh, in reality what you are actually measuring is the animal's behavior is the response that the CS acquires in the absence of us that is what actually we are measuring. So, if you measure that uh, there needs there seems to be a maximum limit beyond which no matter how many times you keep repeating the CS and us the animal is not going to change its response all right. So, that is that is a very very um, outright uh, assumption in this model. Now, in a bit you will realize uh, why uh, this is relevant in in terms of the experimental observations that we have seen before. However, uh, let us ask why would that be the case in an ethological sense. Now, uh, think about this definition of US demands that the US has a response a behavioral response right. US is defined as any stimuli that can elicit its own response in an animal in the context in the setting. Now, that magnitude of that response is fixed that does not change because it is a native response assuming that it does not change. So, in assuming things do not change around that so it, it, it is fixed it does not change. Hence, response you are um, that the US is trying to mediate right uh, what uh, what this is all about is that you are taking another stimuli see us which by itself does not have its response and when presented together with the US you are attaining this new response which we call it as CR may or may not correlate with the UR all right. In such a case uh, there is a natural limit of maximum right you, you cannot exceed or um, uh, I mean you cannot exceed the maximum response that the US by itself has elicited. I mean implicitly I am meaning that the C UR and CR could be same but that is not the case here I am saying even if they are different there is a maximum limit that the US is uh, establishing itself for the UR as a result if that is driving the CSCR. Medi uh, uh, mediating the CS uh, CR rep, uh, response that might it is only natural to have uh, think of that might will also have a uh, maximum response ok. It is very very handy and uh, for sure you will see how meaningful it is when it comes to explaining some of this experimental results. The second point it says that uh, the model says that there is for in every exposure to this CS and US there is something called as a surprise a surprise that the animal experiences and they call uh, they quantified this amount of surprise as the maximum response that one could possibly have. We know that from the first point that is Vmax right for a given US independent of any CS that you try to combine there is a maximum response and that maximum response is Vmax. As a result you can think of a surprise being that is the maximum possible response difference what my current response is. My current response kind of reflects my expectation initially when the CS is naive and then I am for the first time experiencing this uh, CS US combination uh, I do not uh, have any response other than the uh, response elicited by the US itself. That being the case if CS uh, if the UR and CR are different then I have a way to quantify I mean my surprise as V max minus V t. If you actually look into the slide we can see the quantity V max minus V t really uh, captures the surprise that is my um, assertion here because this reflects how much I could respond hypothetically and this is how much I am responding right now. So, the difference tells you how surprised I am all right. So, let us keep that notion of surprise in mind then let us see why is that why is it important to define a surprise. It is important to define a surprise because this is a model that tells you about learning right how do we learn and develop an association. So, that I am going to relate very directly to this surprise 
third point, third assumption is that the rate of learning is directly proportional to the amount of surprise encountered in the given trial. All right. So, if you think of uh, uh, learning as a, a process, right, as a process that happens over several trials. S trials here meaning several exposures of CS US combinations. Then, at for each exposure or in each trial, I am going to learn something and the amount of that learning is proportional to the surprise. So, that is that is what this third uh, assumption is about third uh, um, in this model. If it is proportional then there is something that need to that we need to put in proportionality constant that sets the equality in that brings in the equality right. So, now that um, we call it as an associative constant uh, we will see in a bit when we actually uh, crystallize these ideas into a mathematical equation, but the, um, the point here is I am going to bring in a notion of proportionality constant or a con uh, constant that determines the relationship or that brings in the equality uh, in between the relationship of the surprise to the learning ok that is that is that is all is about the third point. And the fourth and the very important point being if there is a compound stimuli uh, what is a compound stimuli? Uh, compound stimuli is the one where we are actually presenting multiple or a combination of different stimuli right a tone, light, a flavor, smell etc. all of them together forms what do you call it as a compound stimuli. For simplicity let us think of as two, uh, two individual CSS A and B and in a compound stimuli the current strength you, the way you calculate the current strength is sum of contribution of all the CS that is the key here. Why is the current strength important? We said the current strength comes into play in estimating the surprise right that is this V t that is the current strength and we say that V t is sum of V a plus V b in a compound stimuli. For example, a could be tone b could be light in such case we would say this V compound in a given trial, trial we call it as capital T to distinguish from t, small t which is often associated with time. So, V in a compound trial for a given um, uh, in a compound uh, stimuli in a given trial T is given by V tone plus V light. Then one can write the surprise as or the amount of surprise as being equal to we know it is directly proportional. So, clearly directly proportional to V max minus V tone plus V light it is proportional. So, we have to set it equal. So, that is given by some alpha here proportionality constant. This kind of summarizes the entire Reskorlov Wagner model. Now, how useful is this in predicting um, or in uh, capturing the observations that we have seen so far and in turn predicting new ideas or concepts that we would we have not seen so far. A model is uh, good only if it can give if it can make predictions that have not been tested so far and which we can go ahead and test it. Granted this is an old model. So, clearly what when I am saying this the model has been tested, but however from the point of view of Rescola and Wagner when they were developing the model the question that one would like to ask is can we capture all those experimental observations that we have seen so far in these models. If so that is good in addition can I go ahead and 
get something more from this model. If it is not giving you more, then what use is this model or for that matter any model, right? So, that is the notion in um, when you are developing any model or any framework that you need to be able to make some predictions which are really uh, worth testing and it is useful for making uh, future uh, making the future studies easier, right. So, let us uh, um, capture this uh, in a uh, 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 let us rewrite this in a very nice uh, uh, and a concise manner and then um, dissect it out one uh, one at a time what these features are and with an example small example and then let us go back and see how this nicely explains um, the various uh, aspects that we have seen. Uh, now, what we are going to do is so, we, we are going to measure or we are going to observe the response exhibited by the animal, right. And uh, let us uh, call that as uh, the, the, we will equate the response, um, response of the animal, we will equate that to associative strength right that is a good reason for it because uh, it is only because of this association the animal is developing this response right that uh, as the animal is developing a response I mean developing an making an association between the C S and the C R the response the C R magnitude goes up. So, uh, if you do measure the response of the animal it is a good reflection of the associative strength. Uh, we are going to call that we are going to um, call that as v and we are going to measure that as a function of different number of trials t okay so given that then uh, let's go back and then rewrite our expression of learning for a single trial uh, that is given by the change in the response right that is happening at the trial t is equal to alpha times the surprise element which is v max minus v until then which is let us call it as t minus 1. So, now that uh, you uh, this is uh, written in what is called as a difference equation form in this case um, we are actually measuring the change in the associative strength that is um, that is that I am going to equate it to learning in that trial ok learning that resulted from uh, the trial t. Now, you can see oh uh, let us make sure that alphas and my proportionalities do not mix up. So, I am going to erase this and then I am going to write almost like an infinity here for proportionality. Now, what does uh, this tell you? I told you that we have told you that this is a function of two things the nature of the stimuli that we have the C s and the U s right the C s and the U s combination right and this is totally a function of U s alone. So, if that is the case then let us try to see what happens as we progress in the trials. So, let us go to a fresh um, board where you can see what I am going to do now is on the right hand side I am going to plot what might happen to the response as a function of the number of trials ok. We are starting at 0 here and in in the y axis I am going to follow the response I have abbreviated as r actually uh, to be consistent with our uh, notation we would call it as v. So, write this expression once again delta v in a given trial t is equals alpha times v max minus v t minus 1 
okay. So now what it tells you is that for a given association, so clearly there is a maximum that is sent that I have decided that is going to be my US. So let us mark that out maximum as V max here. Now you can see and then let us mark out since these are different difference equations let us mark out uh, precise numbers here 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5 and so, so on and so forth. Now if you do that um, we can see initially all right initially the amount of surprise is very high why because the animal is sitting somewhere here let us mark it with the red cross the animal is initially sitting somewhere here right and that is the animal's response. However, the animal uh, could potentially respond till this point. So, V max minus V t would be that big right during the first trial. So, if you mark it that will be my V max minus V0. This entire surprise does not go into the learning of the uh, animal right. That is what alpha ensures. The alpha ensures that it is not the entire surprise that goes into the learning. Just uh, hold on for a minute if you are wondering why is it not the entire thing but it is something else. Uh, hold on hold on to that thought for a minute but the point to note here is it is not the entire thing because the alpha takes in values from 0 all the way up to 1 that is alpha is a fraction okay it is between 0 and 1 okay. So, the uh, proper way to say is it is defined in this interval uh, 0 and 1. So, it can take values such as 1 tenth half 3 fourths so on and so forth. These are the example values of alpha which means even though the surprise is V max minus V0 this big as I marked in the red at the end of the first trial depending on which of the values of alpha that we choose let us call it as 1 alpha whatever the value that we choose it is going to be at that point. So, let us when it comes for the next time let us mark it out it being there. Uh, maybe we will use a different color here. Let us mark it out at trial number 1 it is somewhere around here. So, this represents the learning that has incurred in the first trial. However, for the next trial the subsequent trial that is a learning in the second trial when, when because you brought the animal back once more again at the beginning of that first trial the green cross represents the response good. So, now how does that change because of that experience during that first uh, I mean second exposure ideally but during the first trial. So, uh, I mean after the first trial. So, what happens is that during the second exposure the surprise element now is given by this gap we define it as V max minus V1 all right. This times the alpha just the way we have measured here um, it is uh, the way I have taken it roughly alpha is equal to half. So, half of this will be getting carried over into the learning when the animal comes for the third time or during the second trial all right. Uh, let us pick up color here that is the navy blue. So, when the response during the third exposure would be somewhere around here like that the animal would eventually eventually as you can see that the amount of surprise progressively goes down because it is uh, it is not like it completely vanishes but it progressively goes down right like that eventually the animal will reach a V max you call it as a it asymptotes to a V max. Now, that 
once I draw it, you will see, hey, yeah, that is my common learning curve that I have seen, it's, it makes sense, but this did not come out until Rescola and Wagner made those models and explained it. I will uh, leave you with a teaser just like every other lecture that this apparently simple model, apparently simple is very, very good in capturing every single thing that we have discussed so far and we are going to see in the next lecture how exactly this is happening. Good, thank you.